Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video to show you how to set up server side pagination for the table widget. And by doing this, I'm also going to show you how to use the total record count available on the table widget. So we're going to do this in two ways. First, I'll start by showing you how to set up server side pagination using a database. We're going to be using PostgreSDB, but the same logic applies for other databases that are available on AppSmith. Then I'll go ahead to show you how to set up server side pagination for the table widget using an API server. And in fact, we would be using the awesome Rick and Morty API server in this video. Are you excited for this? I'm sure you are. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. So right here, I am on a blank application and the first thing I'm going to do is connect to a data source. We'll be using a PostgreSDB and in fact, we'll be using the default PostgreSDB that's provided on apps and that's the user's database. So you have a bunch of databases here. You can go pick one if you already have one set up, but for the purposes of demonstration, we're going to be using the sample users database, which is a Postgres database available on AppSmith. So here we have this already connected. Now, I'm going to write a query to grab records from the database and have that displayed in the table widget to start with. So let's call this the get users query, all right? And it's going to be a simple select query and you can see we have a template here that prefers that for us. So I'm going to run this and from the response, we have a couple of documents coming back. So we can go ahead to display this in a table widget. So I'm going to head to widgets, search for a table widget, all right? Let's bring this right in and I'm going to expand this all the way. All right, and here we have a nice table. So what I'm going to do at this point is link the data coming from the get users query to the table widget by writing some JavaScript binding and typing get users, which is the name of the entity, the query we just wrote, the data, which is the actual data coming back from that query. And we can see all of that information right here, which looks really awesome. So to set up server-side pagination, we need to configure the table a bit. So the first thing we need to do is scroll down and turn on server-side pagination. And you can see that this immediately opens up an input for total records count. We're going to be coming back to this. Then the next thing we need to do here is scroll down a bit and here we have an event for on page change. So whenever the page changes, because we have the page navigator buttons right here, whenever the page changes, we want to go to re-execute the get users query. And now we head back to the get users query to set it up to be able to um, use server side pagination. So let's head back to the get users query. So let's head back to the get users query. And the first thing I'm going to do is break this up a bit so that it is easier for us to read. So we have select star from users, then we have other by ID, then we have limit 10. We haven't made any change to this query. We're just formatting this so that it's easier for us to read. All right, this looks nice. The first thing I want to do is make the limit dynamic because right now the limit is a static number, which is 10. We we'll want to make the limit to be the same as the page size. So let's go um, make this dynamic and we can do that by referencing table one, which is the name of the table widget dot page size. And um, you can see this right now because this has been converted into a variable. So I'm just going to turn off prepared statement and you can see right now this is five and that's because the current size of the table is five. So I can head back to the table. Let's um, edit this a bit. Uh, let's probably display, let's say 10 records. Uh, this is eight, this is nine, let's say 10. All right, we have 10 records. And if we head back to the query, you can see that this now actually displays 10, which is exactly what we want. The next thing we want to do is give it an offset and the offset is going to tell the Postgres server, how many documents to skip in order to get to the current page we need data to be displayed on. So this is going to be offset and it's going to be a single number. In our case, this needs to be calculated from the current page size and the page number. So this is going to be a number calculated from the page number. So this is going to be table one dot page number minus one. And I'm going to multiply that by the page size. So this is going to be table one dot page size. And right now this evaluates to zero because we're on the first page, so it, it doesn't need to skip any documents. But on the next round of the next page, it's going to skip one set of 10 documents and then that will be able to get us to the next page. So let's go test this out. Right now we have the table widget and we have just 10 documents showing. So I'm going to try to go to the next page 
and that's going to re-execute the get users query because we already set that up right here on the on page change event and here we can see on the table we now have new document showing up starting with documents whose id starts from 11 as you can see so we have 11 to 20 we can also go to the next page and we have 21 to 30 and the list goes on now the only problem with it is that right now the pagination of our table widget is infinite we can keep going to the end or keep paging and that's just going to keep generating new pages even though it gets to a point where we actually don't have data to display on the table so let me quickly show you that i'm just going to skip to the last page and you see what i mean all right so right here i'm on the last page and you can see we only have two records displayed here but now the pagination is broken because i can still keep going on ahead to view pages we have no actual records for so we want to be able to control this so that when we get to the last page the pagination button is disabled so we can't go for that but we can go back to view previous pages all right so we need to set this up using the total record count feature and here we have the total record count so if we're able to supply the table widget the total count of the documents in the table or in the database, it's going to automatically control the page navigation buttons for us. And we can easily find out the number of documents in the table by creating a count query to just count all of the documents. So let's head back. Let's go to the user's data source. So we have the data source. We have the user's data source. I'm going to click on new. So let's call this the get count. So this is going to be the get count query and I'm going to select the select template. Um, we don't need the order by and limit in this case because we are just going to be using the count function. So this is going to be count and we just want to count all documents from the user's table. So I can run this and here we have a total of 502 records. So let's head back to the table and use that information in the total record count. So right here I can go back to the table widget enter that information right here by referencing get count the data and this has an array so this is going to be index zero and we can do a dot count all right and you can see we're returning 502 and heading back to the table widget you can see that the page navigation is automatically disabled because it's been able to figure out that in 51 pages would be able to display 502 records if we display 10 at a time. So now the page navigation is handled and we won't have a users viewing empty pages when there are no records to show for those pages. So we've been able to set up server side pagination for the table widget. Next, I'm going to show you how to set up server side pagination using an API server. And like I promised, we're going to be using the Rika Multi API. So this is a really awesome API and I highly encourage you to go check it out. So let's start by connecting to the API and I can head over to the Explorer. Let's create a blank API. I'm going to call this get characters. All right, so this is going to be a get request to the characters endpoint. And of course, like I said, please go check out this API. It's really awesome. And you can also support their work by donating. So this is the Rika Multi API. You have all of the instructions you need on the docs. So please do go check this out. All right, so we're back here and I'm just going to run this query to get characters. And right here, we can see some response. So the results field actually contains the array of characters we can see we have rick right here and we have some other documents with document id but more importantly we have this info object which tells us how to paginate with the api so as you can see we have a next field and this requires a page number we're going to be grabbing the page number to do this and right here we have a total count of the total number of characters available on the API, which is exactly what we need to control the page navigation button. So let's go render the results in a table widget. And I'm just going to use some of the selected widgets right here. I'm going to use the table widget. And right there we have a nice looking table widget. So let's expand this. And I'm just going to center this a bit. And here we have a table widget showing 10 records. So what I'm going to do at this point is head over to the table configuration as well make sure we have server site pagination selected for the total record count we can actually get that from get characters .data .info .count, and there we have the total count of 826 records and let's make sure that 
whenever the page changes, we actually go to re-execute the get characters query. And we can head back to the get characters query and make sure that we are actually passing the page number right here. So as you can see from the response, we need to pass a page number as a query parameter. So I'm just going to um, head over to params. We need to pass a page. And for the page, we can pull that from the page number of the second table widget. So this is going to be table two dot page number. All right. And this evaluates to one right now. So we can head back and give this a spin. So we have, um, actually we have 20 records. So we have one to 20 characters shown right here. We can go page to the next um, section and you can see we have 21 to 40 records or 40 characters showing up right here. And of course we also have the table navigation or the page navigation handled because we supplied the total record counts in the table widget. Awesome. So this has been a quick video on using server-side pagination with the table widget. Now we made a more detailed video on using a table widget. So go check out the video right here to learn all you need to know about using the table widget. And of course, you might want to set up server-side search for the table widget. So we already made a video linked right here to show you exactly how to do that. All of the links will be in the description, so please do check them out. All right, that'll be all for today's video. Don't forget to get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.